Hi, everybody, and welcome to this episode of The Dowagers. I'm Cynthia Schrock. And I'm Sharon Smith. And we can't wait for you to jo join us in this episode. Um, we are so excited. This episode, we are titling it Finding Your Tribe. But the first part of it is going to be staying in your sadness. So, Sharon, let's talk about that a little bit, why we came up with this today. Um, I just love how you and I so organically can um, talk about something and all of a sudden the pieces just start falling together. And part of it, too, has to do with um, situations and things that were around and people that were around really regularly, um, other widows. So um, what do you see about how would you define this episode of finding your tribe staying in your sadness? Well, I think in the beginning, you know, we, we, we're just all, I mean, we're just, we can't even breathe. We don't even know what we're doing, but as, as we, as we move through this and now you and I are, are a little over a year and a half out. Um, and I think you have, you can't, you can't, can't stay there. You yeah. can't stay in this sadness. Now, the grief is always going to be with you. You're, you're going to take that forever. But that, that doesn't mean you forever, however old you are, however much time you have left on this planet, to just be sad. You need to find the joy somewhere in your life. And I think a lot of people, and, and I, I'm sure we all fall into this in the beginning. I know we certainly did. But um, I think staying in your sadness not not dealing with it not not trying to find some joy in your life just digging out of it um and one way that people do that is just to stay busy and i know and i know i know plenty of widows that have done it i'm just going to stay busy just busy 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 and they ignore the sadness and and you can't you can't do that um and you know different things come out of that but just stay in there and just being so sad um, and just no hope. Yeah. And just living in it <clears throat> when you are just, when you get to the point and um, I mean, our hearts literally were ripped out of us. When you lose a spouse, there is nothing. Let me tell you all, there's nothing that compares to losing a spouse. I mean, I've had major illness in my life. I've lost my mom when I was in my late twenties. Um, but I have never had sadness and grief like I did in losing Eric. Um, but I say all that to say, I also know that this earth and this world is temporary and in order for us to get through things on this earth, we can't stay sad all the time. If you stay in sadness, that is a trap of the enemy. And sadness just leads to depression. It leads to anxiety. It leads to anger. It leads to bitterness. It leads to so much when you stay there. And I think that there are sometimes, and I know I've experienced this, and I know widows myself, that they it's almost as if they want to stay there. Yes. Yes. Which brings me to, you know, the part about that we talked about earlier today about almost being a victim of what happened to you. Now, things that happen to us, we can't always control everything that happens to us. But that's part of living in a fallen world. But the one thing we can control is, is how much we choose to allow God to work in our lives or the enemy to work in our lives. And um, you were saying earlier how some people just keep going on and on and on in their grief. And... Um, and I think sometimes that makes them almost to the point where they can get so angry, they lash out at people. If somebody asks them, well, can you do, you know, can you go here with me? Or wouldn't you like to get out and do something nice? 
And I get that. I get that the insensitivity of people, because we talked about that last week or last, right. our last podcast was about how people yeah. can be insensitive. But their insensitivity does not need to mean that we have to walk in sadness and bitterness and anger towards them because they haven't walked where we've walked. Right. And um, how do um, how do you move through that sadness? Um even when there are people in your lives that want you to stay there. Now there's outside people. That's a different, you know, that goes back to last week's podcast. There's a flip side to that of, of there are people who want you to stay there. You almost get a feeling like they're glad that that happened to you. Yeah. Mm, yes. I'm so glad you said that. Because yes, that, that is so true. It's like, and and, and 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 you wonder if it's because are they and huh, I hate I hate to even go there. Go there. That's what I we think, do. Yeah, that's well, that's why we're here, right? So let's be we're being real. That there are some people that may have been jealous of your life in some way because you had something that they didn't or they thought. Let's just put it this way. They thought that you had something that they did because you don't know what goes on in people's lives. You don't. And you know, the, the more that we learn through this, we know that it's like people have shared things with us and you know, it might look all pretty on the outside, but once you open the package, maybe it's not so pretty. Right. And there are, none of us have perfect, perfect marriages. No. And you know, I've, for you know for all the years that I was married I'm like when people say oh my you know everything is perfect they're lying yes they are because they are issues so not, you know you you and Eric Jeff and I we did not have perfect marriages but we had what was awesome for us yeah right and marriages and, work and, and we it. oh no doubt no doubt um and I think you know you know, we can look at things a little bit differently now, but in some things were silly that we did, but, but nonetheless, that's not here nor there right now. But yes. Yeah, so I think there is, there is that there are some people out there that are almost a little, you know, they, they, they want to keep you sad and maybe just maybe, maybe their life is not that great or they so think that it's not. And so then it's like misery loves company. <laughs> so if I can, right? So if I can keep you, right? If I can keep you sad, and I mean, I don't think they do it on purpose. I, I, I don't truly believe that people do, but just because maybe, maybe that, you know, they just, like I said, misery loves company. And so it, it's like a, a, a unconscious thing. Yeah. But so I do think they're, you know, but. <clears throat> You know, staying in that sadness, you have to, you have to, you cannot stay there because it will, it will, it will eat you it up. Will. It will dissolve. It will turn you into like, you know, like we say, a, a, a bitter old widow. Yes. Well, who wants to be that and who wants to be around that? So you can't, you got to find your way out of that. Yeah. Um not going to be like in the first week it's not going to be in the first month you you need time time to absorb what just happened to you yeah you know the one thing um the one thing that i saw um a friend of mine who was a widow has been a widow for a while the one thing that she did that i think really helped her to walk this out a little bit because the grief like you said is always there um but what she did is she told me that the Lord told her that she's to say yes to anything that comes up that year if it comes to being with others. And I think too often we live in a technology state where, I mean, we're using it right now just to get this message out to people for that example. But sometimes when we go through grief, we become such, um, so reclusive and so into our grief and our sadness that we stay inside and we almost start, um, marinating, <laughs> I mean, for a lesser term, 
when you start marinating in that, you're going to become that. And and oh. and when you start marinating in that, you you can become that. You'll start searching people who are in that with you online or other groups that are like that. And that's a dangerous place to be, to be honest with you, because then you're going to start looking for it in places. But back a little bit to what we were talking about, about the, the woman, uh, about the um, bitter old widow and people who have not experienced it, trying to keep you in that sadness. Um, I was sharing with Sharon earlier today when we were on the phone, I was sharing with her that I had somebody tell me just not too long ago, they came up to me and they said, um, they, they just looked at me like, and they said, how in the world do you make it every day? Yeah. And yeah. there was a little part of me that went, you know, what's the answer to that, Sharon? Well, right. Because <laughs> you don't want to say, because, oh, oh no, I'm okay. <laughs> because we're not okay. And you know, so you don't want them to think, oh, I just, I've moved past it, you know. <laughs> But that is such that is such a tangled question. If you think about from a widow's standpoint, that is such a tangled, tangled question. From a widow's standpoint, because what ends up happening is I don't want to look at her and go, Oh, I know. Oh. Sorry, my dogs are barking. You're going to hear the lawn guy go. This is real life, folks. The lawn guy's going to go by my window here in a little bit, and the dogs are going to bark. So if you hear that, I apologize in advance. Puppies, stop. Look at everybody else's dogs when they listen to this. Sky, stop. I'm so sorry. This is so real. Um, yep. So, um, you know, what do you answer? Well, Yes, it's hard, but, you know, or you say, oh, I'm over it. You know, I've got, you know, like you just said, you, yeah. what okay. is the answer to that? Because to be honest with you, it is a multifaceted question that you cannot answer. Oh, absolutely. You, 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 you can't. And, and you know what? And, 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 and in, in your grief, right now at this minute, you might be fine. Right. In five minutes from now, I might, you, know, you or I might walk into a trigger and something or something that triggers us and then we're down on the floor. Right. You know, so, uh, but yeah, you, you, and you can't isolate. And I will tell you, I, two things. My one friend told me in the beginning, one of my friends, she said, when people ask you to go do something and go out, you know, we don't feel like it some days. We just don't yes. feel like it. We just don't. And she's like, you know, you have to say yes sometimes because otherwise they're going to stop asking you. And I thought, well, that's rude. Let me just let me be, you know, <laughs> um, you know, for a while. But the other thing. And so I ke always kept that in back of my mind. So I would say, I just don't feel like it today. But please ask me again. Yes. And that is a great thing because that gets you out of that sadness, because even though in that moment you might be sad. The next day, you might be ready to go and do something. I think the problem comes yeah. when we begin, when uh, when people stay in their sadness, I think the problem comes is when they say no to everything. Yeah. And they don't yeah. allow themselves to really look down at their feet and say, okay, feet, today you're going to take another step. And I think that that's why it's such a multifaceted question because it's one step at a time. It's one little bit at a time. But we have those things in our lives. Um, we have bends in our lives. I mean, come on, we have to be honest. If, you know, certain people have certain bends in their life. And when you have a bend in your life and you tend to lean more towards depression or sadness, something like this can come in and take you out if you are not aware. And the only thing, the only thing that I cannot emphasize enough that's going to get you out of this is Jesus. Uh, amen. You have got to force yourself to press play and have the Bible be read to you aloud on your um, device or whatever. 
you've got to learn to turn that worship music on. You've got to learn to um, press through and say, today I'm going to do this one thing, even if you choose one thing. Yes. And yes. every so often work your way up. Now I'm going to do two things and now I'm going to do three things or whatever. And then limit yourself to that because I think when you stay in that. Now, if your bend is to always want people, and I will say this, um, this tends to be, and I'm not bashing at all, <laughs> but women tend to be more um, victims. They, they tend to play the victim more so than men do. So, um... <laughs> Sorry, technology is just not our forte sometimes, is it, Sharon? Anyway, so women women tend to play the victim more so, and I think that that's actually natural for us. And I don't I don't want to say, um, but but when you play it, when it becomes a character flaw in your life, that's when it becomes bad. So what ends up happening is we can play the victim, where we're always wanting rescuing. And that's because we were married to somebody who maybe rescued us at points and times. Yes. And and I oh think gosh, yeah. our guys want to be hunters, conquerors. That's what they do. Well, they do rescuing well. But the problem comes is when we don't have a physical person there to rescue us, who is going to rescue you in your sadness? And the only answer to that right. is Christ in your relationship with him. So you need to, in order to move out of that sadness and stop being a victim, a re uh, always wanting to be rescued, um, you have got to get yourself in a place where you're around people who will lift you up and point you to Christ and point you to the Lord, because that's the only way. I know you and I have some fabulous conversations as widows together that really help us through that sadness. And I know it, it, it really, you almost got to get to the point where you can be in the middle of crying and then you and I do this all the time and then we'll just all of a sudden crack up laughing, you know? Yep, yes, yes. I think about that sweet yeah. chapel um, that you took me to. I was just at Sharon's oh. house. And, yep. and it was, it's this precious, precious little chapel that she has in her town. Oh my word. The thing is amazing. And the fact that she shared that special moment with me, I was just so precious, but we walked in there and there was a weightiness to the place, a heaviness, a, a reverence. And I started crying. Mm. And then, um, we noticed something in there and we both just, I just looked at you and just started laughing. And I thought that's really what working through your sadness is all about is being able to be sad, but uh, somehow bringing that joy back, bring that joy back into your life, you know, surround yourself with things that bring you joy. Exactly. And you can, and you, and you can, um, do something that feels, feel, makes, gives you joy, makes you feel joyful, but at the same time, acknowledge your sadness. Yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah. Just recognize it. See that it's, you're, you're still sad, but, but, but you're, but you're also feeling joy. I mean, I think, I think there was times that I, I would find myself that I would smile or like with my family or some of my friends. And then I'd be like, Oh, I don't know. I don't know if I'm supposed to, I don't know. Am I supposed to do that? Is that okay? And I thought, you know, after a little bit, you know, I thought, well, wait a minute. No, I don't, I don't want to be sad forever. I don't want to be, I don't, I don't want to have, not have joy in my life. And so I would say, okay, it's okay. So I always had to give myself permission. Oh, that's like, good. It's okay to have some joy. It's okay. And you know, so many people would say, you know, about my husband, cause you know, ones that would know him, they'd say, Jeff would never, ever want you to be through the rest of your life, be sad and laying in that bed, crying and be depressed. Oh my goodness. He might grab me up out of that bed and shake the snot <laughs> out of me, you know. So it's so he would never want that. Exactly. Thing. And so you have to almost 
recognize that too. Yes. You know, your our husbands would not want that for us. Yeah. And so, but but yeah, sometimes it's a little shocking when you when you when you smile or you laugh and it feels foreign. Yeah. Because it's like, well, that was my old life. This is this life, and I'm and I'm sad. Don't let it don't let it overtake you. Don't don't do it. And just do little bits at a time. And but you know, find the things like for me, honestly, finding the things that brought me joy were my grandchildren. Yeah. You know, I mean, besides, besides Jesus, but my grandchildren. Absolutely. We need people to surround us. The ones that bring us joy. Right. And you know, when I was starting to isolate and get wrapped up in that, that sadness and not wanting, not, not that I didn't want to come out of it. I think I was just letting it overtake me and I would isolate and I would find myself like wanting to just be alone. And then my son went, uh, uh. He'd say, nope, you need, you know, you need your grandkids. They're going to come over. And if I, even if I didn't feel up to it, um, he would do it. And then it, it, it was a distraction for me. Mm-hmm. You know, every, that was the big thing, a distraction. And so it was a distraction for me, but it allowed me some time in little baby steps to have mm-hmm. joy. And, right. But, but, and that was great. But, at, but what. I think you and I both have had this conversation many times is we really leaned into Jesus. Yes, absolutely. And not only that, but you know, even think about, think about what happened to you. I love how you shared that, um, that whole the thing about, you know, you caught yourself smiling and you thought, yeah. oh, I'm not supposed to smile. I'm supposed to be sad, you know? And, 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 I think a lot of widows, this is why we do this podcast. We've got to acknowledge even something as simple as that, because what ends up happening, that's the lies that the enemy tells you. He wants to keep you in your sadness. He wants to keep you in depression and anxiety and guilt and forever caught in a trap in your mind where he, you are like the worst person ever if you ever have any joy in your life. Don't give in to his trap. That is a trap that will keep you forever and it will lead to anger and it will lead to bitterness and it won't allow you to move on and move forward for the greater things. Cause like we say, as the dowagers, you know, we were made for something bigger. Our spouses have moved on to heaven. They got the bigger. We're stuck here we and we still have something to do till we reach the bigger. So yes, there's yes. still something for us. We were made for something bigger is, is part of, we know that that's the goal, but while we're here, we can't just sit in sadness and depression and think that smiling is wrong because we lost our spouse or laughing is wrong because we lost our spouse. Because I'm telling you right now, their memories alone should bring a smile to your face. Yes. But at the same point in time, for the women who are listening to this, that maybe they didn't have a great relationship with their spouse and they feel guilty about it now that their spouse is gone and wish that they would have had a better relationship, don't let the enemy beat you up. Ask God what he can do with your pieces that are left of your heart. Because if we allow right. those pieces to be ripped up and broken and shredded, Jesus can still put them back together, but you've got to allow him to do that. You can't beat yourself right. up every day in your mind and think that yep. if I stay sad, that's going to make everything better. If I stay guilty about what happened, that's going to make everything better. If I um, you know, am angry over what happened, then that's going to make everything better. That's not what God wants for us. He wants us to live in his joy. It says the joy of the Lord is your strength, which is going to be our part two that we are going to do. And um, of this finding your tribe, find people that bring you joy. And so, um, that's, that's going to be in our part two. I don't want to get ahead of myself yet, but, um, but we cannot allow that, huh? Don't give it away. <laughs> but we can't allow 
ourselves to get stuck, stuck, stuck um, in that that stinkiness of the stinking thinking um, because that's what the enemy and even something as simple like you point out so well even something as simple as a smile that thought came into your head oh you know, it did I, you know and, and especially if you were if like friends asked me to go to dinner or lunch or or whatever and um well, so if people see me smiling, they're going to, you know, what are they going to think about me? But I was, I felt so guilty. I felt so, I felt guilty if I smiled and I'm like, that's not right. No, this no. Is not right. mm -mm. And, you know, and, and, you know, for the, for the, for the, for the people that are listening to us that are early on, we are not talking about in the first week or the first Oh, month, no, 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 know, no. Or, or even a little longer because. You know, and everybody's situation is different. We were blindsided by by our husband's deaths, um, and some people have a long process. You know, I know when my mom had Alzheimer's, you know, it was ten years. Every day, my mom died a little oh, bit. So that's that's a, a long time. So, right, it is. So there are different different scenarios here, but we are not saying, oh, you know, in the first month, you you know, you need need to find joy. No, you, you got to take your time, but just recognize that you, you are not, we, you, you don't want to be sad for the rest of your no. life. So you need to work out of that a little bit, some little bitty things and that, that bring you joy in your life. And, um, and, and again, lean in, you know, lean into Jesus because he's got, you. Yeah, he's got, he you. does. And, you know, and I see, I see grief, it's waves is really what it is. And, and those waves, they come and they go and, and it's okay when the grief isn't there so much in the, in the sadness that you, because really memories of your loved one should bring you joy. You know, yes. hopefully you do have some good yes. memories um, that will bring you joy. And yes. and you yes. you love to, um, you know, sit in those memories. I mean, I know I love to talk about them with my kids. And those kinds of things do make us laugh, do make us smile. But I also think being around friends and being around others and doing things with others will also cause that. And we've got to guard against um, just being around people who will bring us down or keep us in that sadness. So that's a warning, too, for people outside, even from last um, last podcast, is don't, don't try to keep them in their sadness. But also, don't be rude and be like, you got to get over this. You know, there is such, it's such a delicate balance. It's a... You know, I just had the um, vision in my head. It's a bull in a china shop. You know, everybody yes. talks about the bull in the china shop. That's exactly yeah. what it is, is it's the bull in the china shop. There's a, there, it's a fine yep. line. It's, yep. oh boy. And I think, I think we're going to, we're going to, we're going to touch on that a little bit more in our next, in our next podcast yes. and get into that a little bit deeper, you know just exactly that, you know, that, that balance and who brings it and who yeah. doesn't. Um, but yeah, you just, you do not want to stay sad forever. No, no. You, know, again, you're, you were made for a bigger story. You were made for a bigger and, story. Uh, yeah. And, and yeah, I know you and I, we, we get together, you know, and I think that's why, how this friendship has grown into such a, a, you know, we're kindred. kindred we really are. We really like, are. <laughs> and, and part of that reason is because we understood each other and we could be real with yes. each other. And, and, and that's yeah. what we want to be on here too. Yeah. Yeah. And we love to hear, we love to hear from, from everybody. Uh, we love to hear your comments. We, you know, our messages that we get. So we know that we're, um, we're, 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 we're helping you. Because that's our goal is to help ourselves, but we also want to help. We want to help others to get through this because that's we just got to link arms together because this is a tough journey. It is a tough journey. And we will do it. And um, can you share with everybody about like um, everything that we have, all of our wonderful links? Oh yes. Okay. So 
Um, we are on The Dowagers on YouTube. We're on Spotify. We're on Podbean, Pod... Oh, gosh, there's so many of them. But we Instagram. have a link tree. So the link tree. Instagram, yeah, Instagram, Facebook. Apple um, Podcasts. Websites seem to come. Apple Podcasts. We're, 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 we're branching out and getting there. And we just love, we just love doing this and helping others. And we love hearing from, from all of you. So with that being said, um, we want you to share this podcast with, um, other, other widows, other widowers, and just other, other people that you know that could benefit from this information. Because I know what, you know, previously what we shared is that people are like, oh my gosh, this really helped me to learn how to deal with, you know, help you. So we want to do that. So please share, like our channel and subscribe so we can help you and help others. So thank you very That's much. That's it for this episode from the Dowagers. See you next time. See you Bye. Soon.